Hey, my name is Kaya Athena and today I'm bringing you a book review of The Female Persuasion by Meg Wallet. This is not a book that I would have normally picked up, but one of my best friends said she wanted to read this book together with me, so I decided to buy it and read it. She unfortunately didn't get on with it and stopped reading it pretty early on, uh, but I uh, read the whole book. Here is the synopsis in case you want to read the back. But I'll also tell you what it was about. This book is about Greer, who is in college. And one day she goes to a lecture that is given by Faith Frank about feminism. And this inspires Greer to like seek Faith out. Um, the story isn't just about Greer, it is also about Corey, uh, her boyfriend when she's in college. And it is also about Z, who is Greer's friend. And it is also about faith. Faith is an important person in the women's movement. So this book is about feminism and about these characters with, with Greer being kind of the main character but the other characters being important as well. Now the first chapter of this book uh, was a bit hard to get into because the text kind of rather than just focusing on the situation at hand it also talks about a lot of things that seem only like slightly related in my point of view. So I had a bit of trouble getting into the book. So chapter one, especially the beginning, was a bit difficult. It starts getting more interesting when a bit later on in chapter one, the lecture. And I don't consider that a spoiler because it happens in chapter one and it's on the back of the book. But yeah, in the beginning it it just meanders a bit, if that makes sense. Um, which which could be why my friend was having trouble. Now, this does happen later on in the story as well, but not as much, and it was more related information. This is a book for adults, and I would say it is literary fiction, even though literary fiction is not a category that I myself use in classifying my books, but that's definitely what this is. There's a few chapters in this book that, um, rather than progressing in the, let's say, nowadays timeline, they also uh, reveal some of the backstory of the characters and talk about what, for example, Greer's youth was like. Now, I personally did not mind this. Like, in chapter one, things meander a bit. They talk maybe more about, like, a bit more the history of the, the college, for example, which is, I feel, not as relevant to the overarching story. But I really liked learning the backstory of, of all the characters and so I found that yeah nice to read about. It definitely does read different from like young adult uh, contemporary though uh, because not everything happens in the now. Sometimes even in like a scene during for example a dialogue that characters are having like let's say two characters are having a dialogue it will then like pause the scene and then give you a paragraph about something the character's thinking about or things that seem only a little bit related. Now it does add to the forming of the characters, but if that's not your sort of thing, then this will not be a book for you. For me, it really depends on my mood. I used to be more in that sort of thing than I am now because I am reading like more young adult now than I was reading like 10, 10 years ago. I didn't know much about young adult. I did find the story quite interesting, I found the characters interesting, but like the story is not done in like a scene to scene basis, because the story takes place over quite a few years, so you only get like snippets out of the lives during important scenes and other developments in the characters lives are just, uh, you're just being told if that makes sense. Yeah, I think, I think that's how I would describe it. You're not going to believe it, but there is two dragonflies sitting on my tripod right now. Um, I had the door open earlier. I closed it because I wanted to record this video and not have, like, the outside sounds be on the camera, but I'll open the door up again after this video and hope they can find their way out. So, a green one and a blue one, I think they're dragonflies. If not, then they're something similar. Here are the dragonflies. Again, they might just be small other kind of bugs, but... 
an interesting thing I wanted to share with you about my copy of this book is that a few pages seem to have been misprinted. So I'll show you that, but um, don't read, don't like pause the video, read the text too closely because it happens in the middle of the book. So if you are going to read like line by line, that would be spoilers. So don't don't do that. But see, the book normally is just like like this, right? And then here is where it starts. So you have this weird thing at the side that has numbers on it. I don't know if you can see that text is more in in the middle and there's a big space here on the edge and then here we get that same thing this page looks all right and then the next page uh, is also all right but here there's huge space here and it's very close to the middle and it goes on like that like you can see here like it goes on like that for a few more pages so here as well you can't quite see it, but the page like ends there. So it goes on like that for a few more pages. And then here we got this, this gray bit all of a sudden. The book is split up into several parts. And so at the beginning, for example, it says part one. That's where the gray comes from. But here it is just like a gray bar and like it's not meant to be there. And then a few more pages and it, it goes back to normal. Uh, I don't know if that is the case with like all the copies of this ISBN or whether it is just this one book. I just wanted to share that. Um, I specifically bought this copy because I wanted the medium sized paperback with this cover because I quite like this cover. It is nice and colorful. So I wanted this cover and I medium sized paperback is my preferred reading format. There are um, like trade paperbacks that are a bit taller and I just, this is the format that I prefer. That's why I picked this format, but I just thought it was interesting because I don't often see like misprints like that really in books. So I, I just wanted to share it. It has nothing to do with the quality of the book. The text is all still uh, readable. Is that a word, readable? Yeah, it's legible. I just wanted to mention it. It could be just be the fault of my one book. So yeah, in short, I think um, I like this book. I didn't love it. Uh, there was just too much meandering. Uh, in it for my taste, especially in the beginning, but the rest of it I enjoyed quite a lot. So after chapter one, this is chapter one. After chapter one, I really enjoyed the rest of it. So if chapter one had been done, I guess with less meandering and more to the point, then I would have enjoyed the whole book a lot more. But because it wasn't, I can't say I loved this book. I would say that I liked it and I didn't love like this I, I like i liked it a lot but like it's not a new favorite or anything but yeah i liked it um i will say it it will appeal to only some people and not others so if you like stories that meander a bit that talk about certain details not always relevant maybe interesting it takes place in the united states by the way um if you like books about feminism if you're interested in feminism, if you like it when books also talk about the backstory of the characters and like if you like a book for adults with more complex themes and like literary fiction, then you might like this book. If you don't like reading books for adults and you don't like books that mean that if you like reading more like young adults, straight to the point, not very descriptive kind of books, if you if you're not into adult books that have a bit more description and meanderings and details and all that, if you're not into that, you won't enjoy this book. You'll probably maybe even DNF it, like my friend did. If you don't like books that take place over a variety of years that discuss, yeah, quite some part of the characters' lives, if you prefer books that are that take place over, for example, several days or weeks or months then this won't be the book for you. So as for me, I liked it. It was enjoyable. There was one, one particular twist in the book that I did not see coming and thought was, was quite, I don't want to say well, well done is maybe not the right word for it, but like, I thought that was quite surprising. It was a good twist, let's, let's put it that way. But the book's chapters are not short because sometimes I mention in reviews when books have short chapters, these chapters are more to the long side. 
although they do very not all of them are the same length some of the chapters go into detail about specific characters so it will be that for example um, a whole chapter will be about a specific character and like their backstory and how their life is doing now if that makes sense so it, it goes back and forth a bit one thing i do want to mention is that there is there is some talk of like people of color and lgbt elements in this book let me put it this way the, the main characters are white as far as i could work out and it does do a sort of bit the white is default trope which I think is a bit of a shame, unless I totally missed it. Well, they said the characters were white, I mean, also possible, but yeah, I feel like that was also mentioned. There are side characters in here that are people of color, and there is one of the main characters is LGBT, let's put it that way. I do feel like those elements could have been expanded upon a bit, because I, in a way, kind of wish that, like, at least one of the main characters had been a person of color. Now, there are several side characters in here that are people of color, women of color, but I would have preferred if one of the main characters had also been a person of color, if that makes sense. So it didn't, it did discuss that in part, like feminism and being a woman of color, but not, like that wasn't the focus. And it didn't set out to be the focus, but I guess I, I wish it was a little bit more discussed. I also wouldn't have minded seeing some more LGBT elements in this, um, but there is LGBT elements in this. There is some romance in this, but it is not the main focus of the book. Well, I think I have said most of what I can think of right now. There are uh, quite a few books out there on feminism, non-fiction as well. I have some non-fiction books on feminism on my TBR, so I will be getting to those at some point. So that will be interesting. This, of course, is fiction. And in a way, Fate Frank reminded me a bit of Evelyn Hugo because I just read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. That, that is a book I read recently. And so she is still on my mind. If you want to know more about that book, you'll have to watch that review. Um, but anyway, Fate Frank reminded me a little bit of Evelyn Hugo because Fate Frank is also a person who other people want to talk with and go to and spend time with and want their attention. And Evelyn Hugo is also sort of attractive to everyone like that. And it's just that specific aspect reminded me in faith, of faith, reminded me of Evelyn Hugo. Also because I've just recently read that book a few weeks ago. So they're not uh, much similar in other ways, but it's just that aspect just reminded me of her. Probably also because I read that book a few weeks ago. So anyway, to wrap this review up, which is gone longer than I had anticipated. I apologize. I guess I had more to say than I thought I was gonna say. I like this book. Didn't love it, but liked it. Enjoyed it. It will appeal to some people and not to others. Thank you very much for watching this book review and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!